Let's not forget that traveling the world by yourself has many, 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 many benefits. And here are just a few that I've found over the last few years. So the first is freedom, okay? Freedom! When you travel by yourself, you get to choose the activities. You do not have to compromise with other people and figure out what are they interested in? What do they want to do? If you want to go bird watching, you can go bird watching and nobody's there to make fun of you about it because it's your thing and you are by yourself. <laughs> if you want to spend the entire day inside of a museum instead of going for a hike, you can do it because it is your trip. You have the freedom. You are traveling solo. The next thing that I absolutely love about traveling solo is that you get to explore at your own pace. Oftentimes when I travel, or especially if I've gone with other people, it's we have as a group or as a couple, we have to figure out what we're going to do together. And sometimes I'm dressed and ready to go before the other person is, and I have to wait patiently or the other way around. You know, I want to take a long time or I want to sleep in. And so that does not happen when you travel by yourself. You get to explore at your own pace and you can take advantage of opportunities as they arise without having to consult with anyone else. So for example, I know um, I was in Spain and I had all these things on my itinerary that I thought I should do or that I wanted to do. And I had a timetable set up with it of like, I have to be at this place at 10 a.m. and then I have to be at that place by 11.30. And when I got there, I was just so exhausted from two weeks of nonstop, like every other day in a different location that I just needed to rest. And at a certain point, I ended up just going to this really beautiful park and sitting for hours. <laughs> and if I were with someone else, I would not be able to do that. You know, they would feel that they had things on the list on the itinerary that they wanted to do and that I was kind of messing up the plan or that person would leave and go off and do their thing without me. And depending on the type of person you're with, sometimes people can feel a certain kind of way. Like if we split up on the trip, they're like, well, we came together, we have to do everything together. Personally, I'm not one of those kind of people like if we go together, you know, to a place and then you decide you want to do something that I don't want to do, baby, go do your thing. Okay. I'm not holding you back and please don't feel obligated to stay with me the whole time either. But some people are like that. They're like, we came together. We got to stay together. They're like attached at the hip. But when you travel solo, you don't have that burden. So this is another thing. When you travel by yourself, you know, it's easier to be invited to join a local family for dinner or to be given VIP access to you know, some event or popular nightclub. If somebody's trying to sneak you in, they can sneak in one person, maybe two. It's hard to sneak in five of y'all, okay? <laughs> so solo travel opens you up to potentially um, opportunities and experiences that are just really hard to get a group of people in. If you want to do a tour of a place um, or you, you know, um, I love walking tours. <laughs> and so you want to join a walking tour and there's only one slot open. If you're with four people, you can't go. Um, so many solo travelers, we find that we're able to uh, have unique experiences that maybe a group of travelers wouldn't get. Another thing is that you're able to connect with people in a deeper way than if you were traveling with someone else or in a group. And this is really because when you're by yourself, you don't have a travel companion on which to rely for conversation. And instead you focus on getting to know yourself getting to know the place where you are, and most importantly, getting to know the people that you meet along the way. So the next thing that I will say is um, discovery, okay? So if you have an adventurous spirit, if you, if you travel either as a tourist, a nomad, or maybe you have expatriated to another country, you know, for work, and you have this sense of adventure, like I am doing this, I'm traveling because I want to have an experience, I want to have an adventure, I wanna learn about other cultures. Solo travel, in my opinion, is really the best way to do that. Um, I mentioned you can do whatever activities you want, you can do it on your timetable, but 
the simplicity of traveling by yourself, the quietness that comes from being, from having a little bit of solitude, even though you're in, you might be in a major city like Medellin, or you might be out in the French countryside, but the solitude that comes from traveling and experiencing those places by yourself allows you to think deeply about what you're experiencing and allows you to allow that experience to change and shape you as a person. It can actually be um, really profound in your personality and in your in your self-development <laughs> to travel by yourself and to give yourself the time and the space to think deeply about what it is you're experiencing without the um, influence or without having to filter it through groupthink or what the other people around you are saying and doing. Then finally, when you emerge from this wonderful experience, you can share it with your friends and family, with your ideas and with your opinion about that experience fully formed, right? Because of course you want to share your experience. It's part of the hero's journey. <laughs> you know, the, the hero has a calling and goes out and has this adventure or travels and they're transformed by it. And then they return to their community, triumphant, changed permanently. You know, I think solo travel is just a version of, uh, of Jung's hero's journey. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that I will say is that in addition to learning about yourself and having discovery and these, you know, personal development opportunities is that you also get to build confidence. Now, I talked about this in a previous video. I gave a few tips for how to boost your confidence if you've never traveled by yourself before. Uh, that was, I think, the previous video that I did. So check it out. I'll also link it in the description. But uh, traveling with no one else to rely on forces you to make decisions on your own and figure out what works best for you. It gives you an opportunity to figure out what you like and what you don't like. And if you already know what you like and what you don't like, it gives you an opportunity to really test your mettle, right? What, how far can I figure things out on my own? How far can I go? And I think you will be incredibly surprised and proud of yourself about the things that you can do um, by yourself. It's really empowering. There's a fly. <laughs> I'm sitting in front of an open window in the countryside and this flies and things keep coming into me in here. But it's really empowering and a huge confidence boost when you travel by yourself. Okay. A couple of other things. One thing that I will say is that when you travel by yourself, and it's, this comes along with making friends, is that you seem more approachable. One of the great things that happens is that people are often intimidated by groups of travelers. So they assume that if you're in a group of, you know, two or five, you already know each other and that you're not, you don't want to be bothered. But when you travel alone, people are much more likely to strike up a conversation with you. So you get to just meet people and have experiences and do the thing that you want to do and on your own pace. The next thing that I really enjoy about solo traveling, of course, is friends. I talk about this a lot um, in all the content that I make is like making friends, creating community, because especially um, I think that the people that we have in our lives can add a certain richness and texture to our lives that if you live truly isolated, you don't get to have. But the great thing about solo travel is you get to make travel friends, and but then you're not obligated to constantly be in that person's orbit, right? And it's just, it's, a, it's, it's different. It's different. And I, I really appreciate the people that I have met and the experiences that I've had along the way because of traveling by myself. It can be really good for career development as well. So people that I've met in my travels, especially when they travel when they're younger or if they're at like a pivotal place in their life, they gain this sense of resilience um, and also creativity and new ideas. They find that they've developed a new way of thinking about the world and problem solving. Um, they think outside of the box. They think and behave and are resilient in ways that they would not have been had they not had the experience of extended 
international travel, especially traveling to places that are markedly different from what you're used to. Um, and finally, you know, all of those things together, I think when you travel, like I mentioned, the hero's journey, you know, the hero comes back uh, and they are changed. You are changed by your experiences. And you, in my opinion, people who travel are more interesting than the version of themselves selves that had not traveled. Um, I think, I think, darling, that I'm more interesting now uh, after so many years of international travel or just even local travel, like just seeing other parts. The United States is really big and there are a lot of different cultures around the U.S. And if you don't leave, if you're from the United States like I am and you don't leave the United States, but you have the opportunity to at least visit other places and see that people, there's a different way to live. Um, it just, it really does. I mean, it, it, it can be profound and you have interesting stories to tell at dinner parties and you have interests and um, activities that maybe people who in the community in which you're from, they say, oh, we don't do that. <laughs> Our people don't ski. What do you mean you're going surfing? That's weird. It's not weird. Just you haven't done it yet, but actually it's a whole lot of fun and I encourage you to do it, right? You'll have those kinds of experiences. So you become more interesting, but then you get to bring that um, light to other people around you, your nieces and nephews and, you know, your your family members and friends. And they see like, oh, wow, it's possible to do that, <laughs> that thing. Uh, and so... There are just so many benefits to traveling by yourself. First, the experience being there, um, the freedom and all of those things that come along with it, but then all of the different ways that it changes you are really important as well. And so I encourage everyone <laughs> to travel, 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 travel. If you can't afford to travel, read. <laughs> and save until you can travel. Uh, and then when you do travel, allow it to um, really shape and, and change you for the better. And if you're a little bit hesitant to go by yourself, I've got a video with my tips about how to boost your confidence to prepare for solo travel. Subscribe. <laughs>